Why do you think that personal finance isn't taught in schools for high school kids? Well, they don't want us to know that. Why? I just think because, you know, it, keeps, it, it, it dumbs us down. Mm. You know, like ever since, <laughs> not, uh, this, this is another thing we were talking about too not too long ago. On uh, the s- curriculums in schools, I feel in a way kind of dumb, dumb things down. Um, for whatever reason, you know, they, you know, I don't know why, but we were talking about how we had two people that went to school. Mm-hmm. They didn't speak English. Mm-hmm. They were in ESL classes, right? And they had ESL one, which would be whatever English ESL two would be math. What they were learning in the ESL class, because it was just a teacher teaching what he knew and what he wanted to teach because there was no curriculum for that. And then after he did his ESL class, he would go back into his regular class, and it was like, you know, s- such a big difference. What he was learning in his ESL class was far more advanced than what was, was going on in, in his regular class. Because he had to follow the curriculum in his regular class, is that right. what you're saying? You know, so, you know, he kind of felt like, what the heck is going on? Hmm. You know, he would do algebra in Spanish, and it was nothing compared to regular algebra. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. He, he, and that's what he explained to me, and I didn't. I never realized that because my English is, is is my first language. I never took an ESL class, but I'm like, man, that's crazy. Hmm. One theory that I know is quite popular is that the modern school system was um, partly designed by some large, uh, like industrialists back in the day. Wasn't it yeah, wasn't it Ford? I think it. I think Ford was one of the guys at the round table, but. It was built with the intention of building solid employees. People who show <coughs> up at a certain time, listen yeah. to the teacher or the manager. Dress code, uniform. Yeah, or the person who's in charge. Yeah, they do what work they're told to do. They right. have a lunch break, play session, recess. Yeah. I can see that happening. I don't, I don't know about it, but just think about it, right? As a child, they tell you, let's say... Um, you know, as a kid, don't do this, don't do that, right? Yo, Brian, can you fact check that really quick? The, like Ford, then the Ford, uh, shaping, day. shaping the schooling system. Yeah. You know, as a kid, you're you're told, you know, you can't do this, you can't do that. You get into kindergarten, they start teaching you, you know, how to write, how to read, certain colors, things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you get into elementary school, you start learning math certain uh, certain math um if you take that you know at, let's say at a sixth grade level and you look in china at a sixth grade level it's way different yeah a lot um, more advanced you get to junior high school and now they're telling you now you need to start thinking about your future once you get to high school now you need to you know th- think about college and you're like okay now you get to college and it's like well guess what you know, now you're going to have to pay this amount and do this in order to in order to get to whatever profession you want to do. Um, I see it as like a big business. Yes. Yes. You know, you get to college and all right, so you get to college and let's say you want to become a lawyer. Right. Yep. You know, you do whatever your four years in regular school, um, regular college. And let's say that college costs you two hundred thousand dollars within the four years. Yep. Once you get done with that, now you got more schooling you got to go do. Mm-hmm. And then once you get done with that, okay, now you go and take another test that you have to pay X amount for. And now you're only making, let's say, a hundred grand a year starting mm-hmm. or whatever it is. And but meanwhile, you're like half a million dollars in debt. You know, how do you start off life being in debt? You, you understand what mm-hmm. I'm trying to say? It's very, very interesting the way that kids from a young age are funneled into. Into debt. that direction, into debt, yeah, really, and uh, and I don't I don't know if it really makes sense. It didn't make sense for me when I was crunching those numbers in my head and I was analyzing it like, okay, I'm gonna go to this place, I'm gonna pay you know two hundred thousand dollars over a four year period, and then afterwards, I'm gonna hope to get a job to then pay that back for the rest of my life, and that debt isn't forgivable. It's the only so yeah, debt. Yeah, it's one of the only ones. Or one of the only debts that's not forgivable <coughs> by like, what is that? Um, it might be the only. Can you look up that bankruptcy too? Bankruptcy and yeah. stuff like that. Brian, did you ever find anything on that? Come on, Mike, man. 
<laughs> what do you want from me? No, I, I've been looking it up, and a lot of his stuff is just like kind of like advertising like his like institutes and museums and stuff like that. <laughs> of course it is. That's what we were talking about <laughs> earlier. <laughs> um, but so everything like there is like a few things, but it's all off, like Reddit and like Quora, mm. so it's not. I can't really. Yeah, I know it's back. pretty conspiratorial, if that's the word for it. Conspiratorial. Uh, conspiratorial. Yes. Is it conspiratorial? Or conspiratorial. We're a bunch of idiots. <laughs> Besides that, though, can you look up the debt thing that we were just talking about? Like, I believe because I just told him I believe is one of the only debts that is unforgivable, but it might be the only one. And if that's the case, that's yeah. fucking insanity. It's really, really interesting. But I, I agree with what you said. That statement you said um, that college is largely a business. Yeah, hundred percent. Right. I believe it's that and in it's medical. Not only that. So let's say you, you know first year of college, right? On campus, you know you're gonna see a lot of uh, people handing you credit card applications, um, things like that. You know, all of a sudden now on your laptop you got pop ups or whatever. You know, credit card applications, mm-hmm. credit card. They're real quick to give somebody 21 years old a credit card for two grand, knowing that they don't even work, dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And yep. It just it just shapes you to be into debt, you know what I mean? And I I just think that's that's what's crazy about. It. But same if you were to thing go with try for a business loan. Yeah, different. Yeah, they'll give you a hundred thousand dollars a year to go to college. Yeah, uh-huh. but when it comes to hey, I want to open this business, it's mm. like ah oh, man, you're gonna need more than that. The thing that always worried me about college is how everybody seems so hypnotized by the idea that that's the only way to be successful. Like when you tell somebody older than you or even in your age that you don't go to college, you're like what. You yeah. don't go to college. Yeah, college is like the only way to be successful in modern society. Wait, do you do a trade? No, I don't no. do any trades either. <laughs> I don't and fix then, cars. And then you land into the, yeah. the, the ditch digger category. Yeah, that story. I'll go never tell that, that story. story. <coughs> tell that story the ditch digger yeah. story. All right, so we was, you know, working at Keystone Games. You mean? Yeah. Uh, shout, shout, out, shout out, Uncle Keystone. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Keystone. But no, we had one guy. He and always, I guess I'm I'm a lot better at it now. I still have somewhat of a hard time. I guess you could say. Um, when that question gets brought up, like, oh, do you go to college? Um, I answer it pretty well now, but at the time, I, I would even say at that time, I was still probably a lot more hesitant to tell people, like, oh, like, I don't go to college. Like, I don't have an awesome job or anything like that. But, And this was in the very, very, very infant stages of this whole journey. Yeah. I believe we had just started podcasting when this individual said this to us. And he asked us both. He was like, you guys going to college? And we're like, nah. Like, you know, we're. I don't even know if we told him about none of this, but... No, I mean, fuck it. You don't even need to know about any of that. Yeah. But basically, he specifically said, the world needs ditch diggers. I remember that specifically. Yep. Wow. In quotations. That's sure. exactly how he said it. The world does need ditch diggers, or the world needs ditch diggers. Basically saying that. Yeah. That's what we were. Yeah. We were the world's ditch diggers, because we didn't go to college, and we didn't have a who, who blue-collar who job. That? Some random guy that was just uh, enrolled in this sporting event that him and I were managing. Wow. Yeah. I had one time, I have a story. There was a police officer who I know. Um, mutually, and he told me that I was wasting my life and wasting my potential, mm. and that I'm an idiot for not going to college. Yeah, and there's, as a young kid, there's really a lot of um, like guilt associated with that. It's very really hard to talk about. Absolutely, especially when it's an older person like yeah. that, or somebody of status, or who has a who is like the head of the police force or whatever. Yeah. I know who you're talking about, but people of status like that, when they say it, it holds a different amount of weight, but I think it's kind of ridiculous. And it makes you second guess, like, I don't know, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's kind of what I think it is, though. Like, I think a lot of people in in a weird, twisted way want to pull you to their level. Like, they want you to be on the same page as them. If you show any, even, like, a hint of, like, I'm trying to do big things... People hate that. Some people hate that. Other people, they love it. I we Like, we have one of the tightest-knit communities, and I love that. But some people, I really think, they want you to be at their level or lower than them. Mm-hmm. You don't ever want to see you surpass and that that's level. that's exactly what it is. You know, like, first off, you lose all respect. You tell kids something like that. You know yeah. what I'm trying to say? Like, yeah. Right off the rip. Who, that's that's insane to me. Mm. You know what I mean, you don't, you don't do that. And secondly, you guys, that right there should motivate the hell out of you guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to get that tatted one day. Like, Look, this is what I'm doing. Yeah. I've done this. I've done this thing here on Thanksgiving, giving back to the community, doing this and that. And what the heck have you done? Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I mean, what I'm trying to say? I wouldn't change it for a single thing. Like, and if you look at, at it, especially in terms of time frame, like if I chose to go to college, I would have never been doing this right now. I'd have still been in my junior year. You'd probably be a senior right now. You'd probably be a senior right no, now. I'd, I'd have graduated, I think. Really? Yeah. So I'd probably be a senior right now. I would have still had a whole nother year before I would have even got to start my life versus 
kind of shortcutting it a year and a half in advance, I got to start before virtually everybody I went to school with because I decided not to do that. Yeah. And I got to, I got an extra year and a half or I probably waited too long. I probably could have started earlier, but I had so much of a head start in front of all of those people that, and again, I think like certain people that go to college for certain things, it's awesome. Like if that's what you want to do. And, and, and that's my point too. Okay. I'm sorry. So let, let's say they make certain jobs and certain things that, you know, that you have to go to school. For. Yeah. Yeah. Some people yeah. college is very good for, I think. Yeah, my girlfriend. But Lydia, it's not for everybody. She's, you yeah, know? right. So let's say you don't want to become a doctor. You don't want to do nothing that has to do with any type of more schooling. It's like, okay, now, now what? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's people like that, you know. And I just, I don't know. I think it's crazy that, like we were talking about before, that they don't have anything in the curriculum to what if, mm-hmm. you know, like what if you did, don't want to go to college? Yeah. What if high school isn't for you? Mm-hmm. They do have a what if high school isn't for you. It's called GED. You know? Mm, it's like, yeah. okay, you can take a class, get your DED, boom. And even that has a negative connotation on it. Like, somebody tells you they have a GED, you look at them a certain kind of way. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's just just like everything else. Yeah. You know what I mean? They called you out ditch diggers because yeah. you didn't go to college. Yeah. Like, you got to be kidding me. You know what I mean? One thing I wanted to ask you earlier, um, we got away from it, but I wanted to ask, like, as the man of your household, like, how did you or what was your process in – instilling this knowledge to your children? Like, how did you bring up the college discussion or the job discussion or the being a man discussion? Like, how did you personally execute that in your household? I used myself as, as an example, you know. Uh, my son, Jose, wanted to go to school. And he's good at it, you know. He likes Shout school, Gabe, loves Gabe. school. <laughs> Throwing the javelin, you know? right? He's doing pretty good. Yeah, he's, um, <laughs> you know, doing what he went to school for. and, and But that was him, you know, and which is fine. Uh, you know, I support him in, in, in 100% of what he wants to do. But I've always mentioned that, look, you know, that's not for everybody. My other mm. son didn't really want to go to college. Mm. There was nothing that he, you know, interest him. Yeah. He was more into the trades, you know. He was more into, like, hands-on things. Yeah. Um, my other son, he, um, Louis, he's 21 now. But um, after he graduated high school, he started working as, you know, like, kind of like uh, – construction things mm. like that you know because he liked it and i saw him working in a warehouse and i'm like dude what the hell are you doing working in a warehouse working nights you're only 19 years old yeah man, you know and i kind of took him under my wing and said look I, you know you like to work with your hands come with me i'm gonna teach you how to cut hair mm. and let me know if this is something you like you can stick with it you don't have to kill yourself yeah. you know what i mean um and he did he's doing great now um my barber no really yeah, yeah. That's awesome because he has somebody like you to pave the way, though. Like, a lot of people don't get that either, which I think, like, there's a lot of beauty in that as well, but that's awesome in terms of his scenario that, like, he had that that thing that he well, – not necessarily fall back on because that's not ultimately what it was, but that being put under your wing, like, you worded it. Like, that's awesome for somebody like him. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, as a parent, you know, you'd like to try to offer something like yeah. that to your kid, you know what I mean, so they don't got to go through the same struggles you did, you know, but – um but yeah, I um, you know, he's doing good, man. That's awesome. You know I mean, so college wasn't for him, you know. Um, and I get it; school's not for everybody. But um, but yeah, I saw that in him, and I was just kind of look, you know, you don't got to worry about school. I get it if you don't want to do that. Um, he originally was thinking about going for a trade, mm. you know, but you know, we kind of steered away from that and got into barbering. Mm. Interesting. But like I said, he's young. You know, this may not be his thing, too. Yeah. This may change later on. Yeah. But for now, at least he has a trade, something he can work with. You know what I mean? That's what's awesome about being young is you get, like, this short window of getting to be introduced to all these crazy different things about life. And you're going to get pulled in a lot of different directions. At, at our age, because I believe he's the same age as me, is, like, you're trying to figure out a lot of, like, what your game plan is going forward. It's a very interesting stage of life. You know, my 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 advice to you guys would be just to get out there and try different things. Mm. You know, don't sit around, let time go by. Yeah. Try to figure out what it is, you know.